Minister of NLP and where did it start? Now, NLP started roughly about, say, 40 years ago. Two brilliant minds, Dr. Richard Bandler and Dr. John Grinder, came together in LA. Dr. Bandler had this inquisitive, curious mind, still has, still working in the field. And he had the opportunity of working with a lot with psychologists and psychotherapists. And his question at that time was, what is the point of being able to diagnose somebody with something, some mental health problem, and not be able to fix it other, except for, say, giving them um, uh, antidepressants if they were depressed or just giving them medicine. So, you, so in other words, people would come with a fear, they would talk about their fear, and then they would go home with this fear. And then next week they would come back with this phobia, they put it on the table, dissect it a little bit more, make it maybe a little bit bigger, because they've forgotten some things and now they remember. And then they all pick it up next week and off they go. And then they come back the next week with the same thing. And week <coughs> after week, year in, year out, whatever was plaguing people and whatever was making people feel inadequate, not good enough, scared, or, uh, lacking confidence, they weren't able to get a resolve. So he thought, well, what is the point of just diagnosing and not being able to resolve? There's all the manuals that describe all the different mental conditions, and yet there's no resolve. So what is the point? It didn't make sense to him. At the same time, there were some brilliant therapists that were getting results, and that made him think, okay, what is it that these therapists are doing, very few and far between, that is different to the rest? So he went and he worked with a family therapist called uh, Virginia Satir. And for those of you who maybe have studied some of that, she was very, very well known in her field at her time. And he went and did a lot of family therapy with her, and he also went a lot to the psychiatric wards in America with her. And he learned, he started to model her, he started to study her, he started to look at what programs that she was running, what language patterns she was using, and how she was creating the changes and comparing it. He was being very black and white and very, very objective, just looking at what she was doing and then comparing it to what other people who weren't getting results and saying, well, what is the difference here? He was very fortunate that him and John Grinder were able to model and work with um, uh, Milton Erickson, who was one of, and still known as the grandfather of hypnotherapy, and he had a very strong, well, he was a doctor, so he had a medical background, and he used to teach doctors how to use hypnosis for healing, and they sat and they worked with him because he had huge success. What did he do that was different to the rest of the hypnotherapists or therapists that didn't get any changes? He worked with uh, Fritz Perls, who was a gestalt therapist, and again, looked to see what was it that he was doing that was different. And together, through all those kind of uh, searching that they were doing, they came up with what is NLP. They started to um, model people, so NLP is very much based on modeling. John Grinder was a linguistics professor, and this is where they started to look at the linguistics through Richard ba um, uh, Milton Erickson as well as Virginia City, modeling her. Now, three years after they formed NLP, they had a big fallout, had a big fight in the, in, in the court, and the judge awarded them both with their rights to NLP. So this is why you'll always hear about the co-creators of NLP. So there's two, two gentlemen there. It's Dr. Richard Bandler and Dr. John Grinder. So as a result of that, there's two bloodlines that come down the NLP route. The one is the Bandler bloodline and the one is the Grinder. And very often people in the NLP world will actually ask you, so what are you, a Grinder or a Bandler? You guys are Bandlers, okay? The, the main difference between the two, because they're both brilliant people, uh, is that Grinder is a lot more academic and Bandler is a lot more experiential. So what you will get with Richard, and obviously we believe in the same thing for the results that we've both seen in years over and over again, is that until you've experienced something, you haven't learned it. Time and time again, through my corporate training experience, through my NLP training experience and all of that, I've heard people say, yes, I know that, I understand that. And I say, well, are you doing that? And they go, no. Well, then you don't know it. Until you do it, that's when you know. And this is what NLP teaches you. So all our... Um, learnings and all our sort of uh, exercises that we do are all experiential. So our course comes in three parts. The one part is the part that we stand here and teach you something and give you all the academic background and uh, facilitate the exercises. The second part is that you participate in the exercises, you actually do the exercises, not go, oh yeah, that sounds good, yeah, mm, okay, I might try that one day is actually sitting in the safety and in the comfort of this classroom and, and just do the exercises. And of course, the third part is like any degree. If you went 
to do a degree, and I know a lot of you have got degrees, did you just go and attend class and then go home and you were awarded a degree? Is that how it happened? No? No? So what do you do? What else did you have to do? Go to class? You had to study. So part three of your NLP course is you've got to go and study. You've got to go home every night, and we will be giving you homework every night, but you've got to go there and continue ongoing uh, learnings about how does this fit in? How do I fit this in? Not going and say, oh, that was really great. I had a good week. Okay, let me just get back to laugh again. Because then you just know it, you don't do it. So you're not really knowing it. Um, there's also been a lot of research done about passive and active learning. And passive learning typically is the one where I stand in the front here and I give you a whole lot of good information that you think, hey, that makes sense, and then you go home. And the active learning is where you take what I've just taught you and you actually do what we say, the you know, do the experience and actually experience it in the classroom. Try it out. Get curious. Develop that attitude of curiosity and go that extra step. Now, I know from having done this so much that some of you are going to go, that's rubbish. Or there are some exercises that you're going to like and some exercises that you're going to think, mm, I don't know about that. I'm inviting you today, right now, this very minute, to take all your beliefs and all your resistance and put them in a little box and suspend them for seven days. Get curious. Be brave. Try something different. Because a lot of the things that we're going to teach you are things that most people have said to us, why didn't somebody show me this before? Why didn't they teach me this at school? Why did I have to wait to be 40 to come and have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you because my life is now not going the way I want and I could have known this when I was in school? So we're going to teach you loads of magical things, things that are completely every, against everything you've learned or things that you've never heard of. And you will be able to embrace them, experience them, and then evaluate them by suspending whatever beliefs or expectations that don't fit for seven days in the safety of this room with us. Does it make sense? You're willing? Coming with me on this journey?